When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 But this is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Concussions. They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... Uh... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont Hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. Greetings, everybody, from the Gorsuch Sports Complex at Carroll High School. Welcome to week number five of the high school football season here on SummitCitySports.com. Tonight, we got a good one. The Carroll Chargers hosting the top-ranked Bishop Dwinger Saints. 
Jim Mizo here. Pat Donnelly has joined us from the St. Francis Cougar coaching staff. we got Patrick Reith on camera. Joe Hacker, who's counting down the hours towards hockey season, producing tonight. And we got ourselves a beautiful night for high school football. Sunny skies now. Of course, uh, darkness will be coming in about another hour or so. Temperatures a bit on the warm side, 80 degrees. Weatherman says we should get down to around 70 by the time the game ends, but uh, not a cloud in the sky as we get ready for this Week 5 matchup. The uh, top-ranked and undefeated Bishop Dranger Saints facing a Carroll Chargers team tonight here in Neon Nation that's smarting after their 41-21 loss last Friday at Northrop. Dranger's defense, uh, Pat Donnelly, they were the story last week in that 23-10 victory at Homestead. It's been the, start, the story all year with the, the Dwinger Saints, Jim. They, they've been an outstanding defensive unit. They fly the football. You see those gold helmets really attack the football, and they really set the tone for the Saints. Well, that high-powered Spartan offense was held to just 166 yards last week. The Saints have 4-0, have a one-game lead over Bishop Lures, Snyder, and Wayne. But a Carroll victory tonight would really scramble up the SAC standings heading into the final week's of the regular season. Well, Pat, after Carroll lost last Friday night, what do you think the mindset of the Chargers will be tonight? Well, I'm sure they're extremely hungry to get back out and knock that bad taste out of their mouth after that uh, that, that showing last week. I know Carroll is a, is, a, is a prideful program, great offensive program. That's really a great battle tonight with a great offense from Carroll and the Dwinger defense. It's going to be interesting to see what happens tonight. Well, tonight's broadcast being brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. At Parkview Sports Medicine, it is game on. We are the region's largest integrated sports medicine team, providing athletes specialized services from improving their performance to recovering from injuries. To learn more, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Kelly Automotive Group is Indiana's number one automotive group with over 1,000 new vehicles and 500 pre-owned vehicles to choose from. Please visit drivekelly.com. Simple, transparent, and reliable. The world is waiting for you to make a difference in a way that only you can. Discover your strengths at Indiana Wesley University's residential campus in Marion, Indiana. Visit indwes.edu. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a, fam in a family friendly environment at Big Eyed Fish. The University of St. Francis offers 100% job employment in select programs and 100% pass rates on many license exams with over 2,300 students. The main campus located in the heart of Fort Wayne. Visit sf.edu. And at Parkview Sports Medicine, it's game on. We serve every level of athlete with our integrated sports medicine team, including the region's only specialized athletic rehab facility. Learn more about our services by logging on to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. It's week number five. Let's take a look at the Summit Athletic Conference standings. Heading to this one, Bishop Dwinger again in first place. They have the route to the victory bell in their hands you might say Dwinger at 4-0 in first place Lures, Snyder and Wayne all at 3-1 Carroll, Northrop and Homestead at 2-2 two two. Concordia at 1-3 Northside and Southside at 0-4 and, and uh, Pat it's been one crazy year in the SAC this year with all these fantastic finishes Well, Jim I've been here for 20 years I've lived in this city and this may be the craziest year of high school football in this, uh, this city that I can remember at least uh, boy, really wide open, you know, still, again, Dwinger, like you said, really has a stranglehold on things. They take care of business from here on out. Of course, we've got some great challenges, obviously, tonight and moving forward. But, uh, yeah, you see a lot of teams there with that 3-1 and one record still battling uh, for the conference uh, championship still. All right, the other matchups tonight around the SAC. Bishop Lures is hosting Northside this evening. Also, Northrop trying to add on to their big win over Carroll. They're at Concordia tonight and boy have the cadets had some heartbreak this season losing in double overtime last week to Lourdes and of course uh, the uh, the loss to Homestead in the last seconds the Wayne Generals a very scary team right now they've won three straight they're at Southside tonight and a big matchup the Homestead Spartans 
at Snyder against the Panthers. In the ACAC, we have Adam Central, the undefeated Flying Jets at Heritage. Bluffton, they had to forfeit a couple of games because of ineligible players, so uh, they're 0-4 right now. They're hosting Jay County tonight. Also in the ACAC at South Adams, hosting Monroe Central, and Southern Wells is at Woodland. Northeast State, Belmont is at Huntington North, Columbia City at DeKalb, East Nobles at Leo, New Haven at Norwell. Northeast Corner Conference, a key matchup there is undefeated Angola, plays at 3-1 Lakeland. It's east side at Garrett, Fairfields at West Noble, Fremont's at Central Noble, Prairie Heights at undefeated Cherubusco. Well, we're still, <laughs> you know, we're looking out here, we're about five minutes away from kickoff, Pat, and neither team's out here yet. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a nice night you know, to come out and join us. It's a beautiful <laughs> night for football, great uh, conditions, great field conditions, first and foremost, on the, uh, the natural service. Uh, just a beautiful night for, for high school football. Exciting time. Oh, I wonder if they're looking at each other. You go out first. No, you go out first. No, you go out first. All right, well, let's take a break. We'll come back with the start of tonight's game between Bishop Wenger and Carroll following this time out on SummitCitySports.com. are running play coming home from the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration we are there summit city sports isn't just a business it's a group of companies investing in the youth of fort wayne athletics it's because of parkview sports medicine because of kelly automotive group indiana wesleyan university university of st francis and big eye fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in northeast indiana Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gorsuch Athletic Complex. Jim Meisel along with Pat Donnelly and our SummitCitySports.com crew. Glad you're with us tonight. And they're still coming into the Gorsuch Athletic Complex. Uh, the cars are still coming into the... There's going to be some folks who will have a long walk here. We got here at 5 o'clock, and, uh, you know, a big game like this, you should get here a little earlier than five minutes before game time. But yeah. uh, the Carroll Chargers are out on the field here, uh, Pat. Yeah, looking forward to, uh, to a great contest tonight, Jim. I tell you what, uh, you know, like I mentioned, you know, the Dwinger defense really, uh, you know, really kind of set the tone, like I mentioned, for, uh, for the season so far, these first four games to the Saints. And, and Carroll has an explosive offense. You know, the offense can score points anywhere at any point on the field. That's going to be a, a very interesting matchup. You know, the game against Northrop last week, the Bruins, what they did defensively, they pressured Volt all night long. They flushed him out. They had him on the run. He had to throw passes in a, almost a desperation mode. And uh, we'll see with that 3-4 defense what Drenger can do tonight against this high-powered Carroll offense. Yeah, great offensive football teams. If you're off timing, if you're out of rhythm, uh, you know, that's obviously a, a challenge for an offense. And, again, those, those good, solid defenses that can bring pressure, that can, uh, you know, get the quarterback out of his comfort zone, uh, really present some issues, even for a high-powered offense, much like Carroll. Well, the high-powered Carroll offense uh, featuring quarterback Gavin Volt, who has put up some enormous numbers. He's already passed for over 1,000 yards, and we're just starting week five. He has passed for 1,048 yards this season, 11 touchdowns. His favorite receiver, Camden Childers, he – transfer from Bishop Lures uh, this season. He has 28 catches for 538 yards and six touchdowns. Red Sailor has run the ball hard all year long. Last week, he carried it 17 times for 148 yards and two touchdowns. And uh, for the season, he has scored five touchdowns on 277 yards rushing. Dwinger putting up some eye-popping numbers on defense last week, holding Homestead, as we mentioned earlier, to 166 yards of total offense. And Homestead, when was the last time they were held to minus 32 yards rushing on the ground? And 14 of their plays, Coach, they were tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Just unbelievable. And, again, you got to tip your hat to the uh, the Dwinger defensive staff. Coach Coltman, an old head coach in this league for a long, long time. Uh, son plays on the Dwinger uh, football team and, and coaches that uh, and coordinates that defense. Does an outstanding job in playing great football this season. 
McGarry and Ellinger, maybe two of the best linebackers in the whole state of Indiana right now. Yeah, absolutely outstanding. You know, uh, McGarry, T.J. McGarry, also in the running for the valedictorian of Dwinger High School in this class. He's uh, committed to Columbia University. Just an unbelievable student athlete, and uh, what a leader for this Dwinger Saints team. And McGarry hit a uh, Homestead player last week that forced a fumble. It was one of the most crunching hits you ever want to see. If you saw it on SummitCitySports.com, forced a key fumble, and Dwinger took advantage of the short field and got a huge touchdown in that win over the Spartans. So those are two guys to watch out defensively. Uh, McGarry wears number 30. Ellinger wears 23. On the offensive line, the Saints of Dwinger have a young man, Joe Tipman, who's going to be playing Division I football after this year. Yep, big Wisconsin commit. Uh, well, I tell you what, when Wisconsin goes outside the state of Wisconsin to get an offensive lineman, he's got to be a pretty good one. And, and Joe Tipman is outstanding, uh, the best offensive lineman in our state, uh, again, going up to, uh, to Madison to play football at a traditional power uh, of great uh, offensive line play especially. Well, Pat, uh, Carroll won the toss, and they want the football first. They want to go on offense right away. Yeah, you usually want your strongest unit to have uh, the opportunity first, and we're going to see that matchup we, we talked about at the uh, beginning of the broadcast here right away. So this is uh, this is what we waited for, the offense of Carroll against the Dwinger defense. We're going to see it here start. There is hardly any wind right now, about five miles an hour at the most. So uh, it's a nice night, a warm night, about 80 degrees. So on a warm night like this, conditioning may be a factor as we get into the second half, especially in the fourth quarter. A little bit warm for the players, isn't it? Yeah, conditioning is, is, is absolutely uh, premium. It's the most important thing. But also depth really, really can, uh, can give uh, an advantage to one side or the other. Again, both teams have great numbers uh, in their program, so it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out in the third and fourth quarter. We got a chance later on this this week, number five. You know, won't be long now before the sectionals get here. And we're at the halfway point of the regular season, and uh, Wenger's got a really tough sectional, sectional 20 and 4A. We'll, we got a chance to take a look at some of the other potential problems in the sectionals for Dwenger a little bit later on. Carroll, of course, in 6A, sectional 3 with Homestead, Northrop, and Snyder. All right, John Paul Filler, 6'1", 195, senior, is ready to kick off. And let's light this candle, baby. It's Dwanger. It's Carroll on SummitCitySports.com. Glad you're with us. Filler boots it, and this game is underway. Down to Sailor at the 5. Rhett Sailor to the 15. Has a seam across the 20 out to the 24-yard line. Yeah, right up to seam there. Great blocking on the return team there for Carroll. Start at the 30-yard line for Carroll's offense. Good way to start the game if you're Carroll. We mentioned Gavin Volt, the quarterback, 6'2", 200-pound senior. Receivers, Camden Childers, 6'195", senior. Nathan Hara, 5'10", 155, senior. Leighton Mitchell, 6'1", 165, junior. Tight end, Edward Bransfield, 6'3", 215, junior. Tailback is uh, Rhett Saylor. He's a 5'9", 150, senior. Two receivers on each side. That's the basic offensive set for the Chargers. First down from the 29, Volt to the air. And he has this man, Childers, and he is brought down immediately. They will mark his forward of progress, Coach, at the 34-yard line. Yep, Childers is the guy you want to get the ball to as many times as you possibly can. A little quick hitch play on the first play of the game. Gets that soft coverage. Uh, Oberfeld did a great job of playing that uh, that support there to make that tackle. A great solid tackle there one-on-one -on, -one on, uh, Cam Childers, the most exciting players in the league. They're going hurry up, so Saylor off the left side has a first down and more as he gets out of the 46-yard line, a 12-yard pickup on Saylor's first carry of the night. Really great play design there. It's a power play. Bring in uh, Carroll brought uh, number 77 there, Malcolm around, the guard pulling around as a lead blocker. Really good solid scheme there on uh, second down. Reeve Muncy at left tackle, Kyler Bills at left guard, Oregon Chinnery at center, Sander Hoffman at right guard, and Kobe Malcolm in right tackle. The offensive line, and there's a completed pass down to the 35-yard line to complete the height, and Carroll moving the ball in their opening possession. Carroll really hitting all cylinders right now in the passing game. Good mixture, obviously, there on second down. Had a good, solid run play. But, again, if you can throw the football and loosen up this Dwinger defense, uh, success is there because, again, not many people have thrown the ball very well against them. If you have the opportunity to get those plays, you can get something going here offensively. Again, Carroll in the hurry-up hurry offense. First down from the Dwinger, 35. Sailor 
a kind of a slow developing play and the Sailor has dropped for a loss of three yards by T.J. Tipman. Again, that's what Dwinger, Dwinger Saints want to do, clog that middle, force the ball outside. It was, an, it was an outside hitting play, but the ball got spilled out to that safety run downhill. Tipman made a great play there in the backfield. So now Carroll's behind the markers. Second down and 13 for the Chargers at the Dwinger 38. We're just underway. 10.32 to go in the opening quarter. Volt to the air. And they set up a screen. Here comes Sailor. Sailor's out of bounds. They'll mark him out of bounds to the 33. That'll, pick up, that'll be a pickup of five yards. Really great play call there. A second and long situation. Dwinger did bring pressure to that side. Took the tail back there, uh, out there on the screen. Again, that's what you want to call if you can. If you time it right, you know, run a screen play into a pressure. Now it's third and manageable for Carroll. Third down and eight from the Dwinger. 33, line the gain is the 25, or just short of the 25-yard line, I should say. Three receivers to the left. Volt looks that way and fires. It's caught and at the marker, and that may be enough for a first down. It appears to be at the 24-yard line as uh, the catch was made by Nathan Hera, spotted at the 24. That's a first down. Boy, Jim Carroll's really attacking this three-deep zone coverage here for the Saints. Throwing the quick game and making these linebackers have to cover. They're great run defenders. We're going to try to put those guys in a situation to have to cover pass as well. Vote has hit his first four passes. Balls of the Dranger, 24. Vote flush, scrambling, look out. Down he goes. Woo. And a flag comes in. This may be against Dwenger on that tackle. Well, Jim, again, my eyes aren't the best, but I didn't see anything on the face mask. I'm not sure if this is a horse collar or something along those lines. Volt was thrown down to the 32-yard line. And the officials are talking it over right now. Stops the clock with 10.02 to go in the first quarter. No score. Man with the white hat will tell us here shortly. Still no signal. Hmm. Face mask. Call it against Wenger. And it's an inc incidental face mask, so it's only five yards. Out of all of that, they lost two in the play, so they keep the down box at one. It's first and 12. Well, I didn't see that one again. Uh, I, was gonna say, I don't think I have 20-20 vision anymore at this point, but... All right, first down and 12. Volt to the air to the near side, and it's dropped to the 20-yard line. And that may have been a situation where Childers was starting the run before he caught the football. Yeah, tough little catch there. Speed out to the wide side of the field. Um, you know, that's, that's not an easy throw or catch to make to the, to the wide side. That's a long throw. Again, pretty good pace on the ball there by Volt. Probably one Camden would like to have back. Second down and 12. The Chargers behind the markers. The ball is at the Twanger 27. No score. But a very impressive opening drive for Carroll. It started at their own 29. They try to run wide, and again, they don't have a whole lot of success as a two-yard gain there for Red Sailor will make it third down and 10. Pretty really anxious to see what Coach Colk and the defensive staff here for the Saints do. They've somebody brought pressure. They've had some success here, you know, penetrating into the backfield, uh, getting vote out of uh, rhythm and out of timing when it comes to the passing game. Been pretty successful bringing pressure. We'll see what happens here on third down. Right, they got four receivers. Bolden Height just checked in, number 22. Two receivers on each side. One setback on third and ten. Volt looking, has to scramble, and it's caught for a first down at the 14-yard line. Childers. Childers with the catch, 11 yards, and move the sticks. First down, Carroll. This thing Gavin Vogt can, can give the Carroll offense. Obviously, within the pocket, yeah, delivers a good football, but he also has the ability to move around and extend plays. That was what we call a scramble drill uh, for offensive football, where you know, the play breaks down, the routes are covered, the quarterback breaks containment and finds open receivers down the field. Childers worked across the field and found uh, Gavin Vogt working to the left there and found a little space to catch that football. This will be the 11th play of this drive. Well, the, apparently he did not get the first down. It's fourth and a half yard. I beg your pardon. Well, they got the first down now. Volk inside the 10, down to about the five-yard line. Boy, Carroll's just doing a great job of keeping Dwanger off balance. Uh, quarterback runs, uh, the power run game, the quick passing game, just doing an outstanding job of mixing their calls and attacking this defense. So Carroll won the toss. They wanted to go on offense. That decision so far paying off. They're down to the Dwanger five-yard line. 
Boy, a Carroll touchdown here. Be sending a message. 8.20 to go first quarter. First and goal from the five. Volt fakes the handoff. Goes off the right side. Is hit. Stays on his feet. Fights for every inch he can before he's ridden out of bounds at the two. Again, great job there by Gavin Volt to break a tackle. But you see the pursuit there by the Dwinger Saints. That's the name of the game for them. Is getting hats, those gold helmets to the football as quickly as you can. You definitely see that in the third level. Corners and safeties playing run support. That's a key thing. That's what you saw there again. Uh, you know, next time the Dwinger Saints want to wrap that ball carrier up. But again, just getting that great pursuit to the football. Joe Tippman finally made the tackle. The ball is at the three. Second and goal for Carroll. Knocking on the door. And it's Saylor, and he's going to be dropped for a loss at the five-yard line. Jarrett Lee, inside linebacker. Looked like he came through unblocked. He came in there clean as a whistle there, Coach, and uh, made a big stop. Great job by the linebacking crew there, the whole group, just really getting uh, penetration there. Quick, quick players again there. They have good size, but they run so well. And again, they get in those gaps and fill those gaps very, very quickly. They can run the ball down on the outside. Just a really uh, diverse unit there in that second level for doing your Saints. Carroll's had the ball for almost five minutes on this opening position. It's at the five-yard line, third and goal. They're in four-down territory, no doubt about it, if they want to go for it on fourth down. Vote looking, throwing into the end zone. Give that man six points. Nathan Hara, touchdown, Carroll Chargers. Just like we saw in that third down play, Jim, where Gavin Vogt can kind of break containment, buy, some, buy himself some time to work those receivers open, really outside the structure of the play. A little scramble situation where, again, get those receivers out in space. They can work uh, their way to find those little soft spots, in this case the end zone. A great executed play, great executed drive top to bottom there by the Carroll Chargers. Outstanding. Horton with the extra point attempt. It's spotted, it's booted, and it is good. 6.57 to go, first quarter. Carroll, seven. Top-ranked Bishop Dwinger, nothing. And we're back with more in just a moment on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me. But to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit Drive Kelly. Welcome back, everybody, to the Gorsuch Athletic Complex Neon Nation here at Carroll High School. And the Carroll Chargers with a very impressive opening drive, marching at 71 yards in 11 plays. Five-yard touchdown pass. Gavin Volt to Nathan Harrell. Volt's 12th touchdown pass of the season. Horton's PAT was good. Trevor Horton having a five, fine year kicking the ball for the Chargers. He's now 15 out of 17 on extra points. And Horton kicks it off and gets off a dandy into the end zone. That's an automatic touchback. And that's field position right there, Coach. Yep, great job there by the special teams unit there for Carroll. Anytime he hunts the, the weapon you have as a great kicker in the high school game, you kick in the end zone. Ball's put at the uh, is it 20 or 25 now? 20. Oh, it's 20. Oh, college has now moved to the, uh, the 25. So, um, I believe, isn't it? Or is it out of bounds now? I can't remember all those rules, those kicking rules. It seems to change every year. I know. I should know those things as a college coach. What do you think, Jim? I think I'll be on top of those things. Well, your dad will give you a test. <laughs> I'm not sure he remembers all the new rules either. All right, first down for Dwenger at their own 20-yard line. And the quarterback is Brendan Lytle, a sophomore, 5'10", 160 pounds. They'll run it off the right side. And running room, a big gain on first down for Devon Tipman, a sophomore, 6'1", sophomore. Devin Tipman getting nine yards or eight yards there. That was an old throwback play from, from Bishop Dwinger. You know, get behind the big offensive line, to give a big back to football and get downhill. Really physical uh, play there on first down for the Saints. Saints don't pass the ball a whole lot. Only about 40 passes total for the Saints so far this season. They'll run it again behind that big line. And that big offensive line, that's going to be a huge challenge in more ways than one for the Carroll defense tonight. First down, Dwenger. 
Yep, Carroll's got to rely on their speed. Again, they run pretty well on defense. They move well up front in that first level of that defensive line. But, again, yeah, uh, not many people are going to be, uh, be match up the, the size of the Dwinger Saints up front. We mentioned Tipman. Uh, also, we'll see Lucas Crone in the backfield. The tight end is Vincent Tipman. He's a senior. The receivers are Blaine Houston and Alex Fosnall. They're both juniors. On first down, that play didn't work. And Tipman has dropped for no gain. Of course, we got Joe Tipman at left tackle heading to Wisconsin. He's a senior. Nick Hoosier or Hoosier at left guard. Alex Kochman at center. Joe Henry at right guard. Luke Whittington at right tackle. If you're the Carroll defense, that's what you want to see on first down. Did a great job of getting uh, speed to the football and making that play at the line of scrimmage. Put Dwinger in second long. Second and ten for the Saints. Here's their first pass of the night, and it's incomplete as Lytle missed connections here on the near side with uh, Houston. Yeah, difficult throw there. It's a wide side, speed out throw. That's a long throw for a high school player, especially using the high school hash. Uh, that's a long throw. It's a tough one there. So third and long here for the Saints. All right, line the game for Dwinger is their 41, 531 to go in the first quarter. Carroll leads the Dwinger Saints 7 to nothing. Dwinger was behind last week at Homestead before they came back and won. They load up the shotgun. Two receivers to the right. Option look. And it's a pitch back. And running room close to a first down. This will be a very important spot here over on the far side. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. A little speed option play there uh, for the Dwinger Saints to get the ball out on the edge. Really great job of execution there on that first down. Uh, third, long, uh, third and long to get a first down. And Tipman showing some speed once he got some space. Picking up 11 yards. He's carried the ball four times already. And he needed 10. He got 11. Moved the sticks. First down, six uh, Saints. A big third down conversion for Dwinger. And time for Lytle. Now running out of time, and he throws it away. Now there is some football smarts there by that quarterback. Nothing was open. Throw it away. Lift for another down. Yep, great job of coverage there by the Chargers. Really uh, bottled up that little crossing pattern there, a little, little inside crossing route there that uh, was covered up by those linebackers. Really great job. Again, good job on the other side by the Dwinger Saints of pass protection, but uh, smart play there by, uh, by Lyle to get rid of it and play second down. Well, you saw Dwinger convert a third and ten. Carroll defense had all kinds of problems getting off the field last week against Northrop. The Bruins converted 10 out of 15 third and fourth down opportunities. Option look again around the right end. Tipman is brought down at the 45, and they'll give him three yards and make a third down and seven. It was the exact play that they ran on third and long. Again, uh, great job there by Cam Childers playing corner over there and playing run support. That was the difference uh, in that situation. Or is that number seven? Excuse me. Need to give proper credit to the proper guy. Uh, Jalen Coger yep. playing corner over there, playing great run support. Did a nice job. So the line, the gain is to Carroll, 48. We have 4.56 to go in the first quarter. Carroll, 7. Dwenger, nothing. Out of the eye formation. And they'll pass it. Lytle throws. Got a man for a first down. Plenty to spare. Down to the 40-yard line. Reception made by Connor Christman. Really great throw there by Brendan Lytle. Really a rhythm timing throw. It's a little in cut right at the sticks. You can see the arm strength there of the young quarterback. Really put that thing uh, right in a, a perfect spot on that in cut. That's a pickup of 17 yards. Lytle's first completion of the night results in a Dwanger first down. The ball is at the Carroll 41-yard line. Up the middle they go. That line, look at that line move the blue shirts back. Five yards right there. Again, we talked about it before. This is the big challenge for the Carroll defense to handle that type of surge. You know, giving the ball to the fullback, uh, getting a big push with those guys in the interior, and moving that line of scrimmage back six yards. Going to be the challenge for Carroll. That was Tipman just following his uh, the big beef up front. Five yards to the Carroll 36, coming down to four minutes to play in the opening quarter. Seven nothing Chargers. Chargers scoring in their opening possession. Dwanger putting together a nice drive here. It started at their own 20. Nothing doing this time. That time the Charger defense was stout, and Tipman stopped for no gain. There is a flag down. Larry Seibel, number 65, a 6'4", 225 junior, among those in the blue shirts and on the tackle, and the Saints are moving back, so it looks like this penalty is against Dwenger. 
Really good timely blitz there by the Carroll defensive staff. It's a gut blitz. The gut blitz is an inside blitz by the inside linebackers, really to defend the run game is what it's there for. And a really outstanding job of those linebackers getting at the, the point of attack in a hurry and making a play. Well, we got a face mask called against Carroll. And again, that's five yards for incidental face mask. Isn't enough for a first down. They spot the ball to 31. The guys in the down marker started to move. And it is a first down. So that'll be the fourth first, first down, down for Dwinger. And the first penalty against the Chargers. So we've had two face mask penalties on each side. One on each side, I should say. Both of them the five-yard variety. First down at the Carroll 31-yard line. And the Saints run it. And they try to move the pile for a couple of yards. Tipman carried the ball, and they will just give him a yard. Well, those inside linebacker blitzes there really to, to, to help with that big offensive lineman. Try to get those linebackers quickly at the point of attack to prevent that surge in the run game. Worked there that time. Ball is spotted at the Charger 30-yard line, second down and one for Dwinger. They've run the ball eight times, passed it three times. This will be the 12th play in this drive, which started at the St. 20-yard line following the touchback on the kickoff. Second and nine. They'll run it again. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And Tipman got away. Tipman's got a first down with room to spare inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line. Really good physical run there by Tipman. Boy, you know, in the, in the horde of people there, I kind of lost him there for a first moment, Jim, but he really kind of did a great job of churning those legs and broke out of the, the back end of that pile and got some extra yardage. What a great run there. Well, they're in the red zone now. It's at the Charger 18-yard line. First down for the Dwinger Saints trying to match Carroll's touchdown in their opening possession. Under three minutes to play now in the opening quarter. Again, the wind is not a factor at all. Carroll leading 7-0. Out of the eye formation. And it's a fake. Lido flushed. Lido throws. The flag is down. The patch is caught, but this may be coming back. As the tight end, Vincent Tipman is fighting his way to the goal line and gets in. But I'm not going to give him the six points just yet because uh, this play is coming back, it looks like. We got a penalty flag down to the 24-yard line. And the Saints are not celebrating, so they think it's on them. Yep, here comes the referee with the football, and there's the call holding against Wenger. The flag was thrown at the 24 so this is going to be a big penalty against the Saints. They'll mark it off in the spot of infraction, and they're going to lose 15 yards here total. Yeah, it's one of those tough plays where you ask a, a backfield player to try to secure the edge for the play-action play to roll out, and, and sometimes you just get uh, out-leveraged there by the defender, and obviously your hands are going to be on him. That's when the hole occurs. Tough situation there, and again, uh, it's going to be an interesting series of plays here. Again, if you're Dwinger, you know, you, you probably get some run game going, maybe a quick pass here to get yourself into a manageable situation because you're, was it first and 25 here? Looks like first and 26. Oh, they're going to get a lot of it back here on one play as Tipman carries the ball. Big hole off the right side. And Tipman got 12 yards of the penalty yardage back. Outstanding execute play, the power play again, getting downhill, get behind your big offensive line, get that guard pulling around to get that extra number at the point of attack. Uh, really physical play there by Dwinger. Well, this will make things a little bit more manageable for the Saints. Instead of first and forever, it's now second down and about 13 to go. Again, they go with an eye formation. And it's Tipman off the right side. He's not going as far this time. Maybe a yard, maybe two. It's going to be third and long. And Wes uh, Stevens was in on the tackle. 5'11", 190 junior. Third down. The Dwinger staff, you're kind of thinking, is this is this field goal territory or is it two plays? The third and fourth down. You know, it's four down territory. So you're kind of planning those things. I'm sure Coach uh, Garrett is thinking about that and his offensive staff. Michael Garrett booted a 41-yarder last week against Homestead. He booted a 42-yard field goal last year, so this is within his range. Here's a scramble by the quarterback, and it's a flip and a catch inside the 10, down to the 6-yard line. They're going to get a first down. I don't know if that's in the playbook, but Lido somehow found Lucas Crone and just a little flip, a little street football there, but it's not going to count, it looks like, because uh, the Dwinger Saints are moving back, and 
A flag is down on the far side of the 18-yard line. I believe Lytle was across the line of scrimmage there, Jim. It looked like it. Again, you're kind of looking at that first stick. Obviously, it was a third and 13, so the line of scrimmage is back here on the 22. I think he was just across on that scramble play. Yeah. So an illegal forward pass, and that's a loss of down as well. That'll make a fourth down, and that more than likely will take them out of Michael Garrett's field goal range. The ball will be spotted back at the 26. So we're looking at a 43-yarder now. Is Garrett out there? I don't see him. Nope, I don't see a kicker out there. So they're going to go for it. Fourth down and 18. Three penalties against the Saints now for 20 yards. 1-12 to go, first quarter. And now we will get a timeout, timeout. taken by Dwinger. And we will keep it here during this timeout, kind of reset things. Saints now with two timeouts remaining. We have for this half, I should say. 112 left in the first quarter. Carroll seven. Dwinger nothing. With 637 or 657 to go in the first quarter. Gavin Volt threw a seven-yard touchdown pass to Nathan Harold to cap off a 71-yard drive. Dwinger started at their own 20. Couple of penalties there. Pat Donnelly uh, hurting the Dwinger Saints that got into the red zone. Yeah, it really did. Uh, you know, get the situation when you start with a, a first and 27. Well, it's a tough uh, series of plays there to get it back into a manageable situation. Did pretty good, but again, biting them uh, uh, again uh, there on that illegal uh, man down field, the quarterback crossing the line of scrimmage there, putting the situation here on fourth and extra long. Well, you, you know, Dwinger takes the timeout to talk this over. Do you see the kicker come out now? That's the question. You know, Coach Garrett probably believes in the sun pretty well in this range. He's a good kicker. It looks like the quarterback's coming out here. It looks like the offensive group is out again. Yeah, this would be a 43-yard field goal if they sent young Garrett out, but uh, the coach's son is not out there. Remember now, the line to gain is the eight. And it looks like they got uh, 18 yards to go here. Lido throwing. Once and oh, he's got a man open. Oh, just over the outstretched hands of the Dwanger and Tenor receiver in the end zone. And the Saints will turn it over on downs. Almost a great diving catch in the end zone by Griffin Eifert. Yeah, what a great play call there. I tell you what, had Griffin Eifert open. On the post route, really good ball uh, thrown there by Lytle. Boy, that's uh, that was interesting. Well, that was exciting fourth down play. Eifert had his man beat. But uh, Lytle's pass a little bit too strong. Close but no cigar for the Dwanger Saints. Carroll's defense holds in the red zone with the help of a couple of penalties. And nothing doing for Carroll on that play as the Dwanger defense Needs to make a statement on this Carroll possession. Sailor dropped for a loss of three. Great play there by Jared Lee for the Saints on the backside there with speed running that play down in the backfield. Again, that's a, that's a key, key thing, talking about the Dwinger Saints here, just getting those, that speed to the football, especially from that second level. Second and 13, two receivers on each side. Volt has time, fires, not there. Intended for Childers, and that's going to bring up third and long now. They're behind the markers. You do not want to be behind the markers on third down. You know, good looking play there. Uh, Gavin Vogt just off target on that comeback route there to Childers. Had his man beat, just not a, a great throw. I'm sure Gavin will have that opportunity again later, which I'm sure he'll hook up. But it was there, no question. 33 seconds to go first quarter. Line the gain is the 36. Third down and 13 for the Chargers, leading 7-0. They try to blitz, it's picked up. Vogt throws, got height. And he's got a first down to the 41 yard line. Really great play design there. A little crossing route. A deep in route there from the slot receiver, working in behind those linebackers, working right at the sticks. Great job by Vote again, just kind of breaking the pocket just enough to find that in route working right at the sticks. Outstanding job. 17 yards on that play as Carroll converts a third and long. They lead seven to nothing, and it looks like they are not going to snap the ball because the coaching staff had their hands outstretched as if to tell Volt, let's snap it to start the second quarter. First quarter clock runs out. Carroll leads Bishop Dwinger after one quarter, seven to nothing. Back in a moment on SummitCitySports.com. Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent 
reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Both runners are running. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. Welcome back to the Gorsuch Athletic Complex. Carroll leads here over Bishop Dwinger 7-0. We'll give you a couple of out-of-town scores in a moment. On first down, Volt's pass is at the first down marker, and that looks to be a first down. Childers with the catch. Design, and, sorry, Jim. No, go uh, ahead. Yeah, design roll out there for Vote again, using his mobility, getting that isolated coverage there on your best receiver, one-on-one, -on -one. really well executed play there by, Char by the Chargers. Snyder and Homestead scoreless in the second. It's second down and one here from the 46. I'm sorry, from the 49 of Carroll. And Vogt keeps the ball, gets a first down, and then some! Down to the 35-yard line of Dwenger. Vogt rips off 16 yards and gets a first down. Quarterback read play there. Uh, just outstanding read for first and foremost there by Gavin Vogt. And great acceleration getting north and south off the scheme there. Boy, I tell you what, a great balance here from Carroll. Just really impressed with this offense so far in this game. Cherubusco leads Prairie Heights 21-0 in the second. New Haven leads Norwell 14-0. Here, Carroll leading Dwinger 7-0 as the sun starts to set in the west. On first down, Volt scrambling, looking, throws just before he got hit. He got his man, Sailor. Sailor's inside the 20, down to about the 16-yard line, and Carroll getting big chunks of yards, and Volt is slow to get up as he took a hit as he threw that pass. And everybody here at Carroll is holding their breath right now. What a great play by Gavin Vogt, though, to extend that play. We talked about it really all night. He's done a great job to throw the ball on time when it's there. Then when it's not there, he can really extend the play and find those receivers breaking open in those soft spots in zone coverage or beating a man defender one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, great example of that right there, throwing the ball on the run. Looks like he's going to be okay here, Jim. He's up walking around here. Oh, we got the wind knocked out of him. I didn't see the, the hit as, we, as he threw the ball. Well, he's in a lot of pain right now, Coach. But uh, you're right. I think he'll be all right. He's up and walking. It's football, you know. You, yeah, some... he, he's a football player. You know, he's a tough player. You know, he's a guy that's a great, great athlete, not just a you know, great quarterback. He's a great football player, great athlete. Dylan a Floyd, a sophomore, now quarterbacking the Chargers, as they attend to vote here on the near side. Again, that looks to be a situation where you got the wind out, knocked out. The ball is at the 16 of Dwinger. First and 10 for the Chargers, leading 7-0. Sailor, look at that opening off the left side. And Sailor wrestled out of bounds and around the 11-yard line. Hayden Ellinger finally made the stop. But, boy, this is a far different Carroll team than what we saw last week at Northrop. They are playing with precision, they are playing with sharpness, and they're playing with focus. Well, you definitely see it, Jim. And again, the execution level. I mean, just anything they want to do is going right right now. And again, the balance, run and pass. Great job here by Carroll. 10-29 to go in the first half, and Vote is back in the game. So he took a hit, went out for one play, he's back in. Sailor is driven back. He got to the 9. Now they're going to give him the 10. That's it, one yard. But T.J. McGarry really jumped in the backfield there right off of that ball being snapped and missed that tackle. That's, uh, that's one that uh, I know the Dwinger, uh, Dwinger Saints are going to love to have back that opportunity to get T.J. McGarry through the middle of that offensive line and make a play in the backfield. This Dwinger defense will hit you, and you will feel it tomorrow. That's all there is to it. That's, that's how they play football. Three receivers to the right. Volt steps up. 
Flag is down and vote is down at the 16 yard line. Now let's check out the penalty flag. It's in that area of holding. And again, that's the one thing with a mobile quarterback can happen when he extends plays. Those offensive linemen locking on those defensive linemen for the hold. That's Alec, the is. Alec LaShore, a junior defensive lineman, got the sack for Dwenger. And interesting decision now here for Coach Garrett. Do you take the penalty and push him back and push Horton out of field goal range? I think you have to because of that reason, Jim. I would assume that's what Coach is going to do. It would be fourth down at about the 16 if they decline it. Now, we're, I, I, they picked up the flag, and I didn't see where the spot of infraction was. So they're going to take it. Okay, we'll play third down again. And this will move Horton out of his range as he'll put it down at the 25. And the thing that we've seen consistently all night is, is Carroll can convert long third downs with their ability with vote in the passing game. Uh, again, this may be a two-play situation again, knowing that you're going for it on fourth down, or you try to take a chunk and get in field goal range. Third down and 18. Line the gain of seven. Oh, a little trickeration here. Vote into the end zone, and it's going to be intercepted at the goal line. Up to the 20. Up to the 30. Still going. Look out, he needs a block. It's to the 40. To midfield, and finally tripped up. That's Sam Oberkfell. Oberkfell with the pick and the 50-yard return as Carroll got cute and got burned. Yeah, I tell you what, the play wasn't there at any point. I mean, Gavin Vogt had that receiver kind of breaking open late. Oberfell was on top of that route the entire time. I was watching the play as it developed. I looked down the field to see if there was a receiver breaking uh, open, and there wasn't. Dwinger did an outstanding job of staying home, playing good, solid pass defense there, and kind of forcing uh, – Gavin Vogt to make a throw, and obviously Oberfeld right there to make the play. So what a great job there by Oberfeld, staying home, high point in the football, and a great return as well. Well, the yardage on that return will be cut here as we have a illegal block on Dwenger on the return. That's a post-possession foul. The penalty flag was thrown at the 26. So instead of being out to midfield, that's a penalty that will cost Dwenger over 30 yards of field position right there. Yeah, it's a tough thing. You know, those defensive guys, when you get that change of possession, that quick change of possession, well, you're looking to get those big blocks, and sometimes, unfortunately, uh, they happen in the back. You know, that's four they penalties now the against Dwenger for 30 yards. Yard and they have to start at their own 16, so they lost 34 yards essentially on that penalty. Obergfeld made a great return out to midfield following the pick. Had dreams of a pick six. But it's all for naught because of the holding penalty. So Dwenger's defense gets a stop deep in their own territory. Just when it looked like Carroll was going to go in and stretch their lead to two scores. Now the Saints on the ground get it out to about the 25-yard line. And guess who carried the ball? Yep, it's Tipman again. He may get about 35 touches before this game's over. He's got 12 already. He's certainly on pace. That's that's Dwinger's best run play right now is the, is the speed option, getting the ball on the edge and let Tipman uh, with speed get to that edge. Again, Carroll's going to have to do something in the third level, whether it be a corner run support or safety, really screaming downhill to defend that play. 12 carries for 73 yards for Tipman already. Out of the eye formation, second and two. And it's Tipman again, got a block off the left side and got a first down. Somebody with a nice seal block over there on the left-hand side. Great job up front there by the Dwinger Saints from the scheme standpoint with the offensive line of that power scheme. Great job by Tipman of seeing and understanding the scheme as well, of seeing that block and getting inside that block to get north and south. What you want to do, you want to get a seal here and a <laughs> seal there. <laughs> and you run the play in the... Alley. The old Packers sweep. Yeah. That's a good one. First and 10 for Dwenger at their own 30-yard line. 8.23 to go. Five first downs now for the Saints unofficially. Play action. Lido on first down. Wants to throw. Fires one deep. That's in the coverage. And it's nearly intercepted. And luckily for Dwenger, they still have the football. Boy, you don't want to throw a ball like that in the double coverage. No, wasn't there. Again, uh, young quarterback trying to make a play, really penalty late on the throw. Foul, Looks like a roughing the passer penalty here. Yep. Well, oh, man. Here. Sometimes youngsters get a little too excited. Boy, when you're a young defensive lineman, you see that young quarterback sitting there in the pocket, and you got to take it, you know, you get an opportunity to take a shot. Boy, it's tough to, to, to pull back and not do that. Again, 
I didn't see the play. I was watching the route down the field develop, but uh, that's what the officials saw. And it's marked off coach from the line of scrimmage, not the spot of the foul. So spot the ball now, the Dwinger 45. That's 15 free yards for the Saints. Third penalty against Carroll for 30 yards. And there's 25 yards of field position right there yep. on the penalty. Carroll can't do that. They've played a pretty solid defensive game so far. Fullback has the ball on first down. Four-yard pickup to the 49-yard line. As uh, Crone carried the ball that time. Lucas Crone, a junior. I think we're going to see more of this here. It takes some pressure off Lytle again. Lytle, uh, you know, down the field at least, is, is a little bit late on decisions. That last ball that was nearly intercepted was definitely late. I think you're going to see a lot more of the downhill running game here if you're the guys in the gold helmets and white jerseys. Coming down to 740 remaining in the first half. Carroll leads 7 to nothing. They scored in their opening possession, marching 71 yards. Both teams have uh, gotten the ball into the red zone since then, but have been turned away on second and six. There goes Tipman. Tipman's got a first down out across the 40 to the 37 of Carroll. Give him 14 more yards. Your quarterback's best friend, downhill running game. When you're getting chunk plays like that, downhill behind your big offensive line, takes pressure off that quarterback. Really good uh, drive put together here in the run game uh, for the Dwanger Saints. Dwanger is a team that just seems to wear the opposition out. When you have big bodies like that, it's a lot easier to do. Big people up front uh, can, can definitely wear on a defensive front. Well, the sun has now left the playing surface. Still people coming into the parking lot, would you believe? Here's a two-yard gain to the 35-yard line. Tipman again. That'll make a second down and eight. Getting more of the same here for the Saints. Just getting the ball north and south, downhill. You know, they're, they're pulling a guard. That was a G scheme. The front side guard led the way that time as opposed to the back side guard. A little, little variation of their power run game. But again, you're going to see a lot more of two backs, get the ball downhill behind that big offensive line here. West Stevens made the tackle for Carroll on that last play. Second down and eight. Slot left. One setback. One receiver to this side. Option look. Tipman gets the corner. Gets a block. Look out. Still going. All the way down to the 14 yard line. 21 yards. Really great. Again, we mentioned before, this is Dwinger's best run play so far. Again, their mixture of hitting the ball downhill on the power scheme, then kicking the ball out on the speed option. Great read there by uh, by Lytle to see that defensive end. He's a guy that the quarterback's reading. So if that, if that defensive end closes down the quarterback, ball's pitched outside of the tailback. Really great job there by Crone, too, on the perimeter uh, as the blocker did an outstanding job to really spring that play for a, bit, for a big yardage. They spot the ball. The Charger 15 out of the eye. First down off the left side. That's T.J. Tipman, and T.J. is down to the nine-yard line. I look at the roster. There's four Tipmans on the roster. And that's a pretty common name for the Bishop Tiger Saints over the years. And yeah, that may be the that might be the record though. Four at one time. I know there's been a few over the years. Four at one time. That's uh, that's quite a few. Almost as common at, at Dwanger as the Spirit Tree. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Second down and four at the nine-yard line. Dwanger, nine yards away from tying this game. Tailback gets it up the middle, bounces it off the left side. That's a T.J. Tipman still alive. He got close to the goal line. Did that ball come out? I thought I saw a bag. Did he throw his little baggie there? Well, I did. I saw the same thing. A fumble. And Carroll's got the football. I thought I saw a beanbag go in. Carroll recovers the fumble. And guess, folks, who got the fumble recovery? It's number eight, Lincoln Lance. Well, you know, it's, it's a shame. Tidman had an outstanding run. It's second effort play, you know, he's, he's wrapped up around the legs, keeps turning those legs, and it looked like in that pile as he's trying to reach for that goal line, the ball came out. Again, there was a, there's a mass of people there, and our vantage point's not great. Uh, being, being through those bodies of people, that ball obviously came out. And again, what an effort play, but he's just reaching for that goal line. Just didn't quite get there, and the ball came out. But uh, big play if you're Carroll, no question about it. So a fumble at the two-yard line. Holy Ernest Biner, Batman. <laughs> and Lincoln Lance, who had 15 solo tackles last week in the game at Northrop. He has four interceptions this year, and he has another fumble recovery to the resume. Again, Twanger turned away in the red zone. And Carroll playing it close to the vest. they got to be careful down here now. Backed up against their own goal line. Good news for Carroll. They got the ball. The bad news is they're at their own goal line. 
And it was a sailor stop for a loss of one at the two. It's like Fia Cable there made a great, great play, sticking out that arm as he was on his knees to make that tackle. So tell you what, Sailor had a little seam there to get through. Big play there by Fia Cable. Second down and 11 for Carroll at their own two. Voters in his own end zone, out of the gun. Throws one here at the near side, jump ball, overthrown. Little contact, but you know what? Incidental contact, that pass intended for Mitchell. You know what Lou Holtz used to say? It's not interference, they don't call it. <laughs> yep, take a shot. You know, that's, uh, that's one way to approach being backed up. You take a shot and try to throw out. Obviously, you know, the first play being your best run play. Second play, take a shot, see what happens. That stops the clock with 4.48 to go in the first half. Carroll seven, Dwenger nothing. Dwenger has two timeouts left. Carroll has all three of their timeouts remaining. And speaking of timeouts, it looks like Carroll is going to take one. So let's step aside here. Chargers lead seven to nothing. Back with more in a moment here on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me, but to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Welcome back out of the Charger timeout. Chargers face third and 11 from their own two-yard line, leading seven to nothing. Volt scrambling, look out, and he is still alive. Now he's down, the ball comes out. That's a free ball in the back of the end zone. And the Dwenger get up a four and out of bounds. It is apparently a Dwenger touchdown and give number 40, Alec Lashore. Give that man six points as he recovers the fumble in the back of the end zone. I think some of the Carroll coaches are claiming that Volt made a forward pass with the arm motion. That's their point they're trying to make right now. The guy in the white hat, though, says, sorry, coach, we got a fumble and a touchdown for the guys in the white shirts. Yeah, tough situation there being backed up obviously to that level, you know, it's your three yard line in a third and long situation where you want to have something safe call. There's a try to try to design roll out there for Gavin Vote had a pull up, but then uh, all heck broke loose there with uh, the, the Saints really uh, barreling down on him. Garrett's PAT, hey, at the upright. Oh no, just like Joe Hacker on the ice, he hit the goal post. <laughs> And it stays, Carroll seven, Dwenger six, with 4.35 to go in the first half. We've had a lot of action here in the last few minutes. Yeah, it's been awfully exciting here. And again, uh, what a great play by Dwenger's defense, just collectively. Again, defended the rollout pass, the back end, of, you know, covered the routes. You know, the pursuit got there off that rollout and really forced, forced Gavin Vote into a uh, tough situation. <laughs> Definitely got him into a pickle there in the end zone. Had to scramble around and make something happen. And uh, unfortunately, if you're Carroll, um, you know, the call goes against you. You did see him try to attempt to throw the football there, but again, not to the point where it was forward. Uh, called a fumble, touchdown Saints. Opportunistic uh, defensive play there uh, for the Dwinger Saints. Changing momentum. Well, now that is the second turnover committed by Carroll. Dwenger does not have a turnover on their side. Carroll last week was uh, minus two in that category. But uh, Michael Garrett, he was nine out of 10 on extra points before that PAT attempt hit the upright. So 4.35 to go in the first half. You're J.P. Filler here. You do not want to kick the ball to Cam Childers at all costs. He can make something happen here and change that momentum again with one play. Towards the far side of the field, it goes. Taken at the 13. 
And returning it, that's Terrell Griffin. And Griffin's out across the 30, down to about the 32-yard line. How many times do you see a, a defensive lineman there as your wing player to be a, a ball receiver on, uh, on a kick return? But I tell you what, Griffin looked really good doing that. Pretty impressive athlete. I'm trying to get some out-of-town scores here. Uh, Bird has thrown a touchdown pass to Tyler Grossman, 64 oh, yards. Concordia God. now trails their game, 14-7. to So that's Northrop 14, Concordia 7 in the second quarter. And did I hear right? Oh, my goodness. North 21, Lures 13. Holy smokes. It's like Coach said earlier. It's one of those years. One of those years. I'll tell you what, uh, again, uh, this is a tight football game, and obviously is this outcome is, is, is huge when it comes to the standings of the SAC. But, uh, yeah, it's one of those years. Jim. <laughs> Just anything can happen. Sailor was dropped behind the line of scrimmage. A flag came in. This stops the clock with 4.20 left in the first half. And Carroll looks like they're going to get penalized here. And they'll be pushed back. It'll be first down now. And... About 23 to go following the penalty. Ball be spotted back at the Charger 19-yard line. Chargers lead 7-0. A missed extra point following the Dwinger touchdown. The difference in this Carroll. one. Holding on Carroll. 15 yards or 10 yards, I should say. Fourth penalty for 40 yards. Here's a handoff off the left side, and there goes Sailor out of about the 29-yard line. A pickup on the play of about 12 yards. Boy, Jim, I like this guy, Sailor. I tell you what, scrappy player. Gets north and south in a hurry. Really good run there. Second down, and uh, we'll call it 13 to go. Second and 13 from the 29 for Carroll. Clock moving, 3.38 to go in the first half. Both teams have two timeouts left. And Saylor off the right side is hit, drives Sailor forward about the 34-yard line. That'll be a pickup of five yards. Another tough physical downhill run there by Saylor, giving Carroll an opportunity to manage third, third down. down. And they've done it pretty well all night, you know, throwing the football in third and long. Opportunity here. Third down and eight from the... 34-yard line for the Carroll Chargers. Line the gain is the 42. Chargers leading Bishop Twinger, 7-6. Three minutes to go in the first half. Play clock is at 10. And it's a pass by Floyd, who's in the ball game now. Floyd found Childers, but they are short of the first down at the 39-yard line. Really well defender. The ball looks like it got tipped there at the line of scrimmage, Jim. And then uh, Oberfeld just had a great night defending Cam Childers. I mean, again, that's a great battle. Two, two players that are definitely you know, college-level players, both of them, just outstanding talents and, and having a really good battle tonight, those two. Fourth down and three. And so Carroll has to punt the ball away. Their first punt of the night coming up from Trevor Horton, who's averaging 28 yards a punt. He does all the kicking chores for the Chargers. Gets off a decent kick there. It's going to take a neutral bounce. And now take a Charger bounce. It's going to roll dead at the Twinger 32-yard line. So with 2.05 to go in the first half, Carroll 7, Twinger 6. Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Twinger will get one more possession before halftime. Their defense has accounted for the points tonight. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what Dwinger's approach is going to be here. You know, with two minutes to go here uh, in the half and a young quarterback and have, a, have struggled a little bit here throwing the football in this game. Haven't thrown it well really all year for that matter. So it's going to be an interesting approach here with two minutes. Dwenger will get the ball to start the second half. Keep that in mind. Carroll scored a touchdown in their opening possession of the game. They marched at 71 yards. That's the only touchdown so far for Carroll. Option look around the right end. Up to the 35-yard line as the ball here was T.J. Tipman. And Dwinger appears to be in no hurry to stop the clock here. Yeah, plays been run a whole heck of a lot tonight by the Dwinger Saints. And great job there of run support there by Beeks. 145 remaining in the half. Again, two timeouts left for Dwinger if they want them. Second down and nine from the 34. 
Lytle to the air. Diving catch, short of the first down, and they say he was in bounds. The reception made by Eichler. Griffin Eifert, rather, I'm sorry. Eifert with the catch at the 41. Again, if you're Dwinger here, you want to get things moving a little bit if that's your intent to try to get points here before the half. Tick, 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 tick. They run it. Well, that's going to be an interesting spot, and it looks like they're going to give him the first down at the 43. Looks like that forward progress gave him the first down there with Tittman downhill. D.J. Tittman getting two very tough first yards down, right there. There's one play, Jim, I'm wondering if Dwinger's saving here once they get within striking distance. Is that play to Griffin Iver, that post route that was just missed in the first quarter? That throw to the end zone. We're going to get back to that at some point. 107 to go now in the first half, and Dwinger has decided to take a timeout. That leaves him with one timeout. And again, uh, north side leading Lures, 21-13. Last we heard. As uh, it's week number five here in the uh, high school football in the state of Indiana. Concordia's Luke Speckhard with the pick, but then was stripped by Northrop's <laughs> Green in a crazy game. And uh, that's the last score we had on north side, 21-13 over Lures. A little surprising. Well, north side, they're, they're improving. They've, uh, they've played some teams tough this year. They do have uh, some talent on that team. It's, it's a program uh, that's building. One of these days, they'll get into the win column. First down for Dwinger from their 43. And here's Lido. Down he goes at the 38-yard line. Loss of five. Really great pass rush there by, by the Chargers. Second down. So second down now for the Saints. And the clock is stopped with 48 seconds to go in the half. Third down. You know, having timeouts left, interesting spike there. Is it two timeouts? I think Dwinger has still. One timeout. One now? Left. Okay. Yeah. That's why I just took one, did they? One timeout, I guess it makes sense here to preserve one. Got to get something that Lytle's comfortable with. I mean, these vertical routes, you just kind of tell he's not real comfortable delivering the ball down the field. You get something that's up his alley that he's comfortable with. On third and 15, there's a pass caught. Fighting for the first down after making the catch on the far side was... Uh, was Eifert again, Griffin Eifert. Boy, has spotted very close to a first down at the Carroll 47. Gain of 15 yards. 40 seconds to go. They stopped the clock momentarily. Fourth down. And it's fourth down for Dwenger at the 47 of Carroll. Fourth and a couple of inches. I couldn't tell if Eifert got out of bounds there or not. The ball was spotted and was blown dead. Timeout here. I guess he was still in bounds. Okay, timeout taken by Dwinger. That's their last timeout. And they're out of timeouts now. 40 seconds to go in the first half. Why don't we take a break? Back with more in just a moment on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me. But to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value, however. Number 14, Concordia 7. Okay, getting some out of town scores now. These are all second quarter scores. North side 21 13 over Lures. Northrop leads Concordia 14 7. Wayne over South side 14 0. Homestead over Snyder 7 3. Penalty flags come in. Well, the uh, Dwinger execution at times tonight has not been good. 
And Carroll has also been guilty of some mistakes as well. And then Carroll will be assessed the offside penalty here. And that will give Dwenger a free first down. Yeah, you think you want to get, uh, again, Lytle an opportunity to throw the ball on the speed out maybe again. That was a really good-looking play on third down to Griffin uh, Eifert. Uh, they're on that speed out. Maybe something like that again. It seems like Lyle's more comfortable of throwing the ball within a rhythm and timing route as opposed to something vertical. First down at the Carroll 42. Under 40 seconds to play now. Lots of time. Lytle scrambling, looking. He's going to have to run it as he gets over the line Lytle of scrimmage and steps three. out of bounds to stop the clock. And look three. out when you're standing on the sidelines. <laughs> yeah, Lytle has the ability to extend the play uh, as well as Vote does. And, again, that's an opportunity for him to, to get the ball outside and, and scramble a bit, get to about seven yards and get the ball out of bounds. Now you're getting within a striking distance. We can take some shots maybe to the end zone even if you're Dwenger. Remember, Dwenger's out of timeouts, so they cannot stop the clock. The only way they can stop the clock is to get out of bounds or get a first down or spike the ball. It's second down and three at the Carroll 35. 29 seconds to go in until halftime. Lytle, flushed, throws, got a man, and he dropped it. Boy, that would have been a first down. Vincent Tipman could not bring it in, third down. Yeah, if you're doing it here, Jim, I think you got to throw some type of speed out or a comeback route to, to catch and get out of bounds. At least give, your, give yourself an opportunity, maybe a long field goal for, for Michael Garrett, you know, that opportunity, or at least get a chance to throw one more to the end zone, maybe two. Again, to predicate upon these plays have, have taken a long time with, with, with Lilo kind of scrambling around back there, so I'm not sure how many plays they can get in in this opportunity. Obviously, got to get uh, first down here in these next two. Five on the play clock. Third and three. Passes dropped and complete. Fourth down. So that's that same play they can uh, nearly convert on the last third down and long. It's that speed out to the wide side of the field. Just a bit off target there. Um, you know, fourth down situation, obviously really uh, an opportunity to, to take a shot and get a first down. I, I'm thinking you'll see a first down throw, at least an attempt, either out of bounds or get a quick spike and take that one shot to the end zone. All right, seven of six. Favorite Carroll over Dwinger. Fourth down and three from the Carroll 35 of the Saints. Lytle wants it all. He's got a man. Did he make the diving catch? He did! At the one yard line! If you're Dwinger now, you gotta get up and spike right now. Eifert with an amazing catch! They got 10 seconds, time enough to get up there and spike it. Remember, the clock has stopped while the chains were set. Now they started, and the quarterback Lytle spikes the ball. Eifert with an amazing catch! Boy, big time play there, laying out, great diving catch. Second down. What a big time play. That was an out and up, Jim. That was a, a the speed out that they threw earlier a couple of times on those third downs. They showed the speed out, then wheeled that receiver up the sideline to influence that corner. Got him wide open. What a great throw and catch. Big time throw there by, uh, by Lytle. Eight seconds. They're going to run a play here. Maybe one more play before you try the field goal. It's at the one. It's second down. And now Carroll. Timeout, Carroll. We'll call a timeout, even though the official is pointing towards Dwinger's side. We'll keep it here. Let's kind of reset things here. Pat Donnelly alongside Jim Measel here. Our cameraman is Patrick Reith. Our producer is Joel Hacker. And Pat, you're out of timeouts. You can't run it. Boy, I think, well, where are they, about the two-yard, one-yard line? One yard line. One yard line. Boy, your best run play, you get behind Joe Tipman and see what happens in the run game or some type of bootleg play you know, play pass uh, to get a tight end or a fullback and open in the end zone. But obviously the ball's got to get in the end zone here because you certainly run out of time if there's any type of if there's any type of uh, uh, stop here uh, you know, in the backfield. Uh, time will certainly expire. So, yeah, some, some thinking here if you're Dwenger. Again, interesting timeout here by Carroll, giving Dwenger a little bit more time to think about this call. But we'll make sure the guys are freshed and, and refreshed and have proper personnel in and short yardage. It's going to be a heck of a battle here on uh, for one play here, Jim. Well, a big part of this football game right now. Carroll seven, Dwinger six. Obviously, momentum into the locker room is on the line here. Here we go. 8.1 seconds. I formation. 
Off the left side, Tipman, and give that man six points, TJ Tipman. Could have worn a tuxedo into the end zone. What a job by the left side of that Dwinger offensive line. Yep, no mistake there. Get behind your, your great All-State left tackle there, Joe Number Tipman. Young man going to University of Wisconsin. It's a guy you want to run behind. That's certainly what the Dwinger Saints' plan was, and it worked perfectly. That came with four seconds to go in the first half. Dwenger plays beat the clock and wins. Bud That's Collier would have been proud of them. Did a really great job of really clock management there in general. And again, you know, had uh, the one timeout that they called. They saved the one and then, uh, you know, made a couple plays there to, to give them an opportunity to that. They're going for two. Power eye, student body left, and T.J. Tipman takes it into the end zone for the two-point conversion. And, brother, you talk about momentum changing right before halftime. Momentum will be wearing a white jersey when halftime comes in about four seconds, Coach. Yep, great job again, like we mentioned before. Good time management, good uh, selection of plays. You know, get some plays that your young quarterback's comfortable with. And then when you get down to it, you need a yard, you get behind your big left tackle, get north and south, uh, and just a physical, physical run there. And that goal uh, to go, well, I guess it was a uh, second down, but again, uh, time would expire if you didn't get the, the touchdown there with no timeouts left. And again, well-executed play there. Well-executed drive in general by, by Dwanger and certainly had that momentum like you mentioned, Jim. Well, you think Griffin Eifert's brother, who now plays for the Cincinnati no, Bengals, will be yeah. showing that catch to his teammates in the yeah. locker room tomorrow. <laughs> Look so at my baby brother here, yeah, boys. Absolutely. Okay. With social media, you could probably have it here in a few minutes. Taylor. His brother was a good player, boy. He was fun to watch over the years. And the Bengals are 2-0. and How about those Bengals? And, and, uh, it was a good game last night. Yes. you got to keep Eifert, the older Eifert guy, healthy now. Yes, it's good to be 2-0 and after the first two games. Well, that division's looking pretty good. That, uh, that yeah. AFC Central's going to be good. And Griffin will field it at the 8. This will end the first half. Griffin is down, Griffin and the time. clock has expired. First half comes to an end. Carroll controlling most of that first half, but Dwenger with a late touchdown. And the top-ranked Saints will take a 14-7 lead into the locker room here at halftime. So, again, your halftime score at the Gorsuch Athletic Complex at Carroll High School. The Bishop Dwinger Saints 14, the Carroll Chargers 7. Back with more in just a moment on SummitCitySports.com. When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 But this is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Concussions. 
They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont Hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. And welcome back, everybody, to the Gorsuch Athletic Complex halftime. Bishop Dwenger leads Carroll 14-7. And we'll step aside right now. You can enjoy the Charger Pride from Carroll High School, all 193 members. is the band ready.
Well, we hope you enjoyed that performance from uh, the Charger Pride, a 193-member Carroll High School marching band. Boy, 
put on a great show here tonight. And before this big crowd, I mean, this is a standing room only uh, audience here at the Gorsuch Athletic Complex for this uh, big game between Bishop Dwinger and Carroll. Uh, Dwinger leading here at halftime, 14 at the 7. Recapping the scoring plays, Carroll got the first touchdown of the night with 6.57 to go in the first quarter. As uh, Volt threw a 7-yard touchdown pass. Gavin Volt, a 7-yard touchdown pass to Nathan Hera. And it was 7-0 uh, Chargers. And that was the only touchdown of the first quarter. The... Bishop Dwinger, Saints score twice in the second quarter. One of the touchdowns coming from defense as Alec LaShore recovered a fumble by quarterback Gavin Volt in the end zone. He got to it before the ball went out of bounds right along the, uh, the back line. The PAT was missed with 4.36 to go in the half. It was 7-6 Carroll. And then right before halftime, Dwinger played beat the clock. They used their timeouts effectively, marched down the field, and scored from a yard out. T.J. Tipman with the touchdown, and then Tipman tacked down the two-point conversion. That TD set up on an incredible diving catch by Griffin Eifert. He uh, was spotted down at the one-yard line, then on the next play, T.J. Tipman took it into the end zone for the score. Jim Measel here. We have uh, St. Francis assistant coach Pat Donnelly alongside. We have Patrick uh, Reith on camera. Joe Hacker producing tonight. Pat, I thought Carroll controlled most of that half, but boy, that Dwinger touchdown right before halftime had to give the Saints a big lift going into the locker room. Yeah, it seems like those big momentum changing plays. You know, that defensive play on that uh, rollout pass there by Vote that end up in the touchdown, you know, controversial or whatever you know, it may be. I mean, the um, result was the turnover and, and, and Dwenger made a play there and got the score. And, uh, but, you know, if you're, if you're Carroll, you want to get back to, to what brought you to that first score, the first possession of the game. But great balance, uh, well-executed, quick passing game. And I think it's something that uh, Carroll will look to do this second half. So I'll tell you what, what a, what a great first drive. Really set the tone for the game. And somehow late in that second quarter, just kind of slipped away after that uh, defensive touchdown by, uh, by the Saints. Some first-half stats by our numbers, and the, these are unofficial. We had Dwanger for nine first downs, eight for Carroll. Rushing yards, a big... A big edge for Dwenger, 138 yards for the Saints, 50 for Carroll. Carroll with a slight edge and passing, 85 to 74. So total yards, Dwenger 212, Carroll 135. Dwenger also in the turnover department with the edge. They did not turn the ball over in the first half. Carroll turned it over twice, an interception and a fumble. Of course, the fumble led to the, the first Dwenger touchdown. So... Uh, Carroll's just simply, Pat, they, they got to win the turnover battle here in the second half, I think. Yeah, and again, uh, it starts with their offense. I think the defense, really, Jim, has done well. I mean, again, uh, you know, the last drive probably, you know, obviously the, the scoring drive obviously resulted in, in points, but uh, some timely players there by the Saints offense. But I think Carroll overall has had a good, solid defensive half. And again, if you're Carroll, it starts with the, the unit that uh, has gotten you this point in the, in the season that you've had success. The, the, the group that really dominated Snyder a few weeks ago is their offensive side. And uh, you got to get back to, uh, to to that what uh, you know the elements of that first drive were. And again, it's a quick passing game, good balance run and pass. You know, giving Gavin Vote opportunities to get the ball outside on the po uh, roll out outside the pocket, and give him some options throwing the football. So. Uh, I'm sure that Coach Papagianos, the offensive coordinator, and Coach Diane, head coach there for the Carroll Chargers, have discussed those things at halftime and, and getting back to what was good in the first half. Parfew Sports Medicine continues to lead the way in Northeast Indiana. Our specialized sports medicine team offers direct access to physical therapy and sports physicians in our new Parkview Ortho Express Clinic located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse. No referral needed, saving you time and money. Visit ParkviewSportsMedicine.com to learn more. By the way, penalties in that first half. Carroll, 5 for 45 yards. Dwinger, 4 for 30 yards. Out of town in the SAC. Is this the night for the Northside Legends? They lead Bishop Lures in the second quarter, 28 to 20. Northrop, late in the first half, was leading Concordia, 23-14. Halftime, the Wayne Generals all over Southside at 21-0. Wayne on their way, it looks like, their fourth straight win. And also at the half, Snyder leads Homestead, 9-7. Some other area scores, halftime, East Noble and Leo tied at 21. Last score we had, New Haven was leading Norwell, 14-0. 
Halftime, undefeated Angola leads Lakeland 10 to nothing. And Cherubusco also unbeaten. They're up on Prairie Heights 35 to nothing. Class 6A, top team of the state, Warren Central, smashing Ben Davis 49 to seven. And you were mentioning, uh, Coach, how big of a game that is in Indianapolis, and right now it's no contest. Uh, that's a huge game, two of the largest schools in the state of Indiana. Football powers, perennial powers, not only at the state level, but at the national level. Uh, two schools that I get the, the, uh, the fortunate opportunity to recruit, which is uh, which is a lot of fun from, from my standpoint. But, uh, yeah, really kind of a surprising score. I mean, even though uh, you know Ben Davis, one of the best teams in school history last year, you know, went 14-0 uh, uh, you know, and, and won the state championship going away last year. Really didn't have a close game all year. And, uh, you know, that quick turnaround, you know, one year, Warren Central now in the driver's seat in that conference and in the state at, uh, at 6A level. Avon is ranked second in 6A, Brownsburg third. Snyder ranked 11th this week, Carroll 13th. In 5A, New Palestine, Decatur Central, Michigan Center, the top three teams. In 4A, Bishop Dwenger, Northwood, Mishawaka, the top three teams. Angola was ranked sixth, Leo 16th. In 3A, the top three are Evansville Memorial, West Lafayette, and Indianapolis Chittard. Bishop Lawrence ranked seventh, Concordia 13th. In 2A, Indianapolis Cecina. Eastbrook and Western Boone, the top three. Woodland ranked 14th. And in 1A, the top three teams, according to the Associated Press this week in their weekly high school football poll, Pioneer, North Central, Monroe Central, Cherubusco ranked 6th, Adams Central 7th, South Adams ranked 10th. Well, we're still a few minutes away from the start of the second half, so why don't we take this break? We'll come back with more. Again, the score is Dwinger 14 Carol 7, back with more in just a moment on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. We're treating injuries when and where they happen and working to prevent them before they do. We believe the best care is coordinated care, helping ensure you get the individualized services you need every step of the way, offering innovative treatment techniques to get you or the athlete you love back in play. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far. So they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Welcome back everybody to the Gorsuch Athletic Center. Dwanger leads Carroll 14-7 here at halftime. Parfew Sports Medicine is the area's largest integrated sports medicine team, specialized in serving every level of athlete, no matter if they're trying to get better at what they do or recovering from an injury. Our experts coordinate your care and state-of-the-art facilities in our community to start your journey. Visit us at parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Jim Measle here along with St. Francis assistant coach Pat Donnelly. The Cougars back in action tomorrow. Coach, back at home? Yeah, back at home. Excited. 12 uh, noon kickoff. Uh, love uh, playing at Bishop Darcy Stadium, especially noon kickoffs. What a great environment. You know, we'll have tailgaters out there about 7.30 in the morning tomorrow morning and get those grills fired up and have a great time. And uh, looking forward to we got St. Ambrose coming in, who's uh, receiving votes in the top 25 this week, or 2-0. Uh, so they're a hot team right now, and it's going to be a good battle. We've had uh, good battles over the years with St. Ambrose, so we've got a lot of respect for their staff and their football team and looking forward to a great challenge. And, um, you know, Another great day, uh, great weather it seems like. It, uh, the reports say that uh, kind of similar to today, a little warm, but uh, good weather for football tomorrow. So come out to Bishop Darcy Stadium here in town and see uh, the back-to-back -back national champs play. Yeah, they're calling for temperatures in the 80s tomorrow, sunshine. So hopefully hopefully the guys are hydrating themselves back at the dorm. Yeah, we've, we've been preaching it all week. We have uh, our guys uh, pumping the Gatorade and fluids all night here. So, All right. Adjustments by the two teams entering the second half, Coach. Well, again, I, I mentioned before, you know, right at the halftime there, uh, if you're Carroll, you got to get back to that first drive. You know, the elements that, that were so good to you is a quick passing game, the balance with the run and the pass. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're if you're Dwinger, 
uh, getting things that uh, Lytle is comfortable with throwing and getting back to your, to your downhill running game. Again, you got the great offensive line, got the big back, Tidman, to get the ball north and south. Uh, those are the things you have to be able to do. And it's going to be, uh, you know, might be one of those games, uh, Jim, that whoever has the ball last you know, wins the football game. This is going to be an interesting second half. Well, of course, sectionals are just a few weeks away. It's Dwingers in sectional 20 and 4A. They're 4-0, number one in the state. But... They're in a real tough sectional. It includes Logan Sport, Columbia City, and the Wayne Generals. All those teams are three and one. We could get another Dwinger Wayne matchup come sectional time, and hopefully, if that happens, the weather will be a lot drier than the first time they met. All right. Dwinger gets the ball to start the second half. Carroll in their home blues, Dwinger in their road whites. Well, I thought I was at a Trine University game for a moment there, hearing that thunder. <laughs> There's the boot down to the goal line. And up to the 10. A C to the 20, to the 25. That's Tipman. A big return out to the 38-yard line. T.J. Tipman really establishing himself here. Well, T.J. Tippett's had a great game. Both sides of the football. They all have special teams. Been a, been a huge, huge contributor tonight for the Saints. A big return on the second half kick and good field position for the Dwinger Saints. They lead 14-7 as we start playing the second half. Undefeated in the top rank, Bishop Dwinger at 4-0. The Carroll Chargers trying to get back on the right path following their loss last week to Northrop. They're 2-2. Two two. We figure Carroll needs to win this game to keep any hope they have of being in contention for the SAC Championship alive. And now, before the snap, we have a whistle. Penalty flag. I think we got an illegal substitution here. Referee made that indication like it's an illegal substitution. And it's on Dwanger. That's a mental mistake right there. Yeah, it looked like one of the offensive linemen had their hand down and got back out of their stance. Once that, that hand's established, can't pick it up and then put it back down without the, that uh, the motion penalty, the shifting penalty there. So it's now first and 15 for Dwanger at their own. 32-yard line. Each team has been penalized five times in this game. Dwinger, thanks to a touchdown by T.J. Tipman right before halftime with a 14-7 lead. They'll run it on first and 15. Bouncing it to the outside. A stiff arm here in the corner. That's uh, Devin Tipman carrying the ball. You know, if I say Tipman has the ball, I think I'm covered. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good chance you, uh, you have the right guy there. With four of them. Yeah, Devin Tippett's been really an impressive player for, for a young man here. Uh, you know, only a sophomore, which is really impressive. Him, uh, you know, being the uh, taking a lion's share of the running game here with the carries and done a great job tonight. Well, he carried the ball a lot in the first quarter, and then we saw T.J. Tippman in the second half of the second quarter. So uh, Devin should be well rested. And look at this play. All the way down to the 35-yard line for Dwinger. First down. Look at the linebacker First Ellinger there getting a, uh, a carry there from a fullback position. Well, he's a horse, a big physical guy, 210-pound junior. Really great linebacker now helping on the offensive side of the ball. Well, he is listed as a uh, backup running back. So first down for Dwinger at the Carroll 34-yard line. Fullback gets the carry. Up the middle they go, and there goes Hayden Ellinger. He did rush for six. Uh, he did rush it six times for 73 yards last week. Yeah, Good-looking player, you know, physical player. Again, they're going to spell him a little bit here because he's a great defensive player as well. But again, th this is the type of drive if you're Dwinger that you talked about at halftime, that you want to establish the downhill running game, get behind the physical big offensive line, get big backs downhill as well. That's certainly what they've done here uh, in this first drive of the second half. Second and two from the 26. Two receivers to the near side, one setback, option look. And it's kept by the quarterback, Lido, running room. He's got the first down, Lido, the and then there. some. He's all the way down to the 11-yard line. You know, that's the other part of that speed option play. 
So the first five or six times that first half, that ball was forced on the pitch. So the defensive end took the quarterback. That time, defensive end took the uh, pitch man, the tailback there, which gives that quarterback the opportunity of keeping the football and then hitting that thing north and south. Great read there and great execution there play uh, by, that, uh, by Lytle there on that play. Well, it's at the 10, so they cannot get a first down. And they'll run it off the right side. Devin Tipman, the sophomore. I can't believe Lido and Devin Tipman are still sophomores, and they play with so much poise and confidence. They really do, and again, you can see the size of Devin Tipman, a big physical guy, uh, as probably a 15-year-old. Again, you see the, he's going to get bigger. He's going to be a good-looking kid the next few years. He already is. Well, he's uh, listed as six. Age. He's listed as six foot one eighty. Looks listed little, as looks a little bigger than that to me. Yeah, you know, you know uh, looks bigger than that in pads certainly. Second and goal from the sixth. And the aforementioned Devin Tipman fighting towards the goal line. And give that man six points. Touchdown, Saints. Devin Tipman from six yards out. And it's a two-touchdown lead now for Dwenger with 9.20 left in the second quarter. Yeah, just what uh, what Dwenger uh, talked about and discussed in the game plan coming out to, to start this first drive of the second half. Really uh, executed to a team. Downhill running game, physical, give the ball to big backs, get behind the big offensive line. Uh, again, a great executed play on the speed option play uh, there by Lytle to keep the football, but just a really outstanding approach in the run game uh, to, to open up that second half and get a great scoring drive. Michael Garrett will try the PAT. He missed one earlier. And it's spotted. The kick is up right down the middle, and the kick is good. I wish I could hit my uh, tee drive like that right down the <laughs> middle. We have a timeout of the field. 9.20 left in the third quarter. New score, Dwenger 21, Carroll 7. Back with more in a moment on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. We're treating injuries when and where they happen and working to prevent them before they do. We believe the best care is coordinated care helping ensure you get the individualized services you need every step of the way. Offering innovative treatment techniques to get you or the athlete you love back in play. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. Welcome back, everybody. The Dwenger Saints 21 and the Carroll Chargers 7. You could just see throughout the second quarter how Dwenger was slowly but surely turning the game in their favor and now they have uh, momentum on their side they scored right before halftime and on the opening possession of the second half they marched it down the field and extended their lead to 21 to 7. here's john paul filler ready to kick off big crowd here tonight at the gorsuch athletic complex as that ball Goes in and out of the end zone. I mean, it is standing room only here tonight. You couldn't get another fan in here with a shoehorn, as uh, Van Patrick might have said back in the day. 9.20 left in the third quarter. Now, Carroll has to respond on this possession. Yep, we'll get uh, Devin or Camden Childers uh, going here, get him involved. Whether it's a quick game or taking a shot vertically with him, you know, a great outstanding uh, receiver. They really just had a couple of catches, and they've all been quick game. They want to give him an opportunity vertically down the field. The uh, Dwenger student body giving it to Neon Nation right now. Why so quiet? Well, let's see if the Charger football team can get their fans something to yell about. And there's a nice run out to the 25-yard line as uh, Saylor picking up five there. He now has 33 yards on 11 carries tonight. Jim, it's good to see uh, Gavin Vogt back out there. And he was walking with the training staff there uh, at halftime, getting looked at a little more thoroughly. Good to see him back in the game. Now, he took a couple of shots in that opening half. Dwenger is a team that's very, very physical. Not dirty, physical. They play the game hard. There's a pass that's caught by Childers for a first down. The ball came out. Whistles, blow, and now they say incomplete pass. So there is a break for Carroll. Because if they had called that a fumble, that was going to be a Dwenger recovery. Yeah, I'm not so sure. You look at those uh, those NFL rules, making the football move after you have the reception. Uh, you know, this back judge here had a pretty good view of it. Apparently, uh, Travers didn't have full possession of it. Uh, boy, awfully close there, though. No replay in high school ball. No <laughs> challenges. We just keep playing. 8.45 to go third quarter. Three receivers to the near side on third and five. Line the gain is the 30. Vote. 
Under a rush, he throws behind Hyde. He's got it, though. Now he drops it, and he says incomplete. Apparently did not have control of the football as his knee hit the ground. And so it's fourth down, and Carroll with a three and out. Yeah, unfortunately, there are two drops there in the passing game. Uh, routes that were open, again, give credit to, uh, uh, to Cam Childers. That was a traffic play, you know, on that slant. There's a lot of people there involved. But, again, if you're Carroll, boy, you know, good play calls, had some people open, got opportunities to convert first downs uh, or third downs into firsts. Got to make those opportunities count. Get so few of them in the game. Horton needs a good punt right here. Good snap. Gets it out of there. Boy, he had a punt blocked last week against Northrop. Oh, what a big hit at midfield. Holy smokes. Get the license plate of that truck. Woo, doggies. Eifert absolutely drilled by number 80, Matthew Ottenweller, a junior tight end. Mercy. You know, Jim, that's why they have the fair catch roll, you know? Uh, yes. You have the ability of putting that hand up and maintaining possession. We'll have to take one of those. So, again, uh, Griffin well, obviously didn't see that young man uh, with great speed right there on him. Well, he got right up, didn't he, Eifert, after taking that hit, and he hung on to the football. But uh, that's the hit of the night right there. Three receivers, two on this side. And Lytle in trouble, hit from behind, and it's incomplete. He had Maxton Green all over him. Lytle's pass for 74 yards. Unofficially, uh, Volt's pass for 104. And go ahead, Coach. Uh, you've seen that concept a few times, and really Carroll's done a good job with their linebackers stopping those crossing routes. Really nothing there for Lytle, forcing him to, to scramble around and try to make something happen outside the pocket. So Carroll has 55 yards on the ground, 104 through the air. Second down and 10. Dwenger leads 21 to 9 on second and 10. It's uh, Devin Tittman off the right side. Got a couple of yards. There is a flag down at the 45-yard line. That stops the clock with 8.17 to go in the third quarter. In the area of holding, I'm assuming. Do you take the play or do you take the uh, yardage? Yeah, if I'm Carroll here, Jim, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make uh, the young man here, uh, Light will have to throw the football to beat me. You know, if you try to get these guys in a situation backed up uh, where they have to throw the football, because I tell you what, they've done a pretty good job in pass defense overall. And you can count on one hand maybe the ball's completed down the field. One was, uh, you know, the, the out and up before the end of the half there. But uh, really, Carroll's done a really good job defending the pass. So they mark it off in the spot of infraction, which was the 45. Now second and 19 for Dwenger. Second and 19 from their own 35. It's a bootleg, and there's a pass by Lytle in front of the Dwenger bench at midfield, and the pass is incomplete, they say. Yeah, just really nothing there. Well defended again. I, I'm just really you got to tip your cap to the Carroll defense in the back end especially. Uh, bootlegs, crossing routes, uh, quick game. They've really defended uh, you know, the, the structured pass plays very, very well um, all evening. Again, the one out and up is the one I can remember there before the half that's really gotten these guys uh, down the field. So really great job of pass defense here for the Chargers. All right, huge play for the Carroll defense. They need a three and out. Langer took the opening possession and scored. Now on third and 19, option look, kind of a sloppy pitch there. Look out, ball's on the ground. Langer maintains possession. But that play just did not work from the get-go. T.J. Tippett finally covered up the bad pitch by Lytle. Loss of one, and it's fourth and 20. Yeah, that's been uh, Dwinger's really best, at least the, the, the play they get the most yardage on. Again, the downhill run game's been really good, but the, the speed option play, get the ball on the edge, really well defended there uh, by the Chargers, the, the best of the evening, really forcing that bad pitch. Good play there by the defensive end, creating indecision there for Lytle. So, waiting for the punt now from John Paul Filler. Good snap. Gets it out of there. Decent kick to the near side. And it's going to go out of bounds here in the near side. They will spot it out at the 21. So, the Chargers will start at their own 21-yard line. With 7-12 to go in the third quarter. Dwanger leading Carroll 21-7. 
Jim Measel along with St. Francis assistant Pat Donnelly here, our cameraman Patrick Reith, Joe Hacker, our producer. Glad you're with us tonight on SummerCitySports.com. Hopefully you're enjoying the action wherever you're, you've logged on to. Packed house. I mean, I look out in the parking lot. There is not a parking space to be had. You may have to park down by uh, Tim Hortons right now <laughs> to get. I mean, it's. First, they got construction work going on in DuPont, and they've detoured the traffic onto uh, Heston Castle. That was nice at 5 o'clock. Well, I live in this area, Jim, and it has just been a disaster the last few months with this construction. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll be very honest I really with you. Think, I really think uh, the state model should be rolled under construction. Here's a pass. Look out. Screen pass. Sailor to the 25. Still on his feet. Fights for everything he can to the 27-yard line. Five yards in that play. Really good play to get some momentum going if you're Carroll. You know, it's a safe play, the screen pass. You get those defensive linemen refreshed and energized, first play of a, of a drive, get them in a pass rush mode, and really good executed play there. All right, here's Carroll going back to their hurry-up offense now. Sailor off the left side, driving. He's going to be stopped short of the first down at the 31-yard line. That'll bring up third down and one. Getting back to the tempo if you're Carroll. Makes a lot of sense. You know, creates a little sense of urgency. You know, getting moving with the no huddle. Again, uh, Tempo definitely stresses the defense, but also forces your offense to get lined up and stay in that attack mode, which is the key thing. Well, I beg your pardon. They gave him the first down. Boy, I guess the down marker wasn't quite aligned correctly. I thought he was about a half yard shy, but it's a first down, and here's a pass, and it's caught to the 40-yard line. Catch. Caught by the tight end, Ed Bransfield. That'll be a pickup of about seven All yards. Charger, I like the approach here uh, for the Carroll Chargers. Tempo, mixture of run and pass, play action. Really good combination of plays here. On second down, Volt fakes the handoff. First down and then some. Out to midfield. First down, Carroll. Move those sticks. Quarterback option play there, reading that defensive end. Brought that, uh, that fullback or tight end around to lead the way on the quarterback uh, portion of that play. When he pulls the ball around, he's got a lead blocker. Really well designed play and execute there by the Chargers. Ball is at the Dranger 49-yard line. We have 6.07 to go in the third quarter. Carroll driving down 21-7. Sailor runs into his own guy, bounces it out, gets some running room, still going. First down all the way down to the 36-yard line. And Carroll's offense is back in gear. Tell you what, Jim, just noticing this here, this is one of the first, first times I've seen, really, on the perimeter, you don't see the speed of, of the Saints getting to the football. Boy, Carroll did a great job of covering those down linemen up, getting to the linebackers, and staying in blocks. You don't see those gold helmets flashing to the football like you did in that first half. Dwenger leads 21-7, but Carroll is driving. First down at the 36. Play action, Volt wants it all. Childers! Get that man six points! Beautifully from pass. Both the Childers and the Chargers are back to within one touchdown. Well, you just kind of thought this would happen at some point. Getting Cam Childers down the field, the play action play, which freezes the linebackers, also holds that safety in the middle of the field to get Cam Childers with great speed in behind him on that post route. And what a just beautiful football there by Gavin Vogt. Just picture perfect throw on the post route. The extra point shot. Trevor Horton will try the extra point. That's Volt's 13th touchdown pass of the season. And the Chargers are to within seven. For Childers, by the way, his seventh touchdown reception. Timeout, 5.35 to go, third quarter. New score on the board. Dwenger 21, Carroll 14. Back in a moment on SummerCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me, but to have staff that wanted the best. Buddy, well, this one looked like Dwenger was in control of things. Carroll marches it downfield. Offense looking sharp, really, for the first time since the end of the first quarter. Now leads Lakeland 13-0 in the third quarter. 
And Concordia trails 23-21 in the SAC. Concordia trails Northrop 23-21. That game's in the third. So here we go, another close game for the Cadets. Luke uh, Speckhart with a pick six return for Concordia in that contest. All right, 21-14. Dwenger over Carroll. And a big kick by Horton. Oh my goodness, 65 yards. In and out of the end zone. No chance at all for a return. Field position. Well, the field position, just the momentum back and forth in this game, Jim. It's, it's really been a, a, a really exciting game. And just what a great answer. Um, you know, coming out in the second half, this drive, this last drive by the Carroll Chargers, again, good mixture of run and pass. They use tempo as well, that no huddle tempo, really kind of uh, getting a sense of urgency offensively. I thought it was just an outstanding drive, really changed that momentum back into their favor once again. Now it's a Carroll uh, defense's opportunity here to slam the door on Dwinger. Snyder now leads Homestead 16-7. First down for the Saints, a running play. And then some. Out to about the 35-yard line, Devin Tipman. He just Tackle keeps going. Yeah, he's a guy late in the football game. He is a, a tough guy to tackle. Late in the football game when you're fatigued after a long physical game makes it even more challenging. So it uh, doesn't look like Tipman slowing down any time in this game. I got him for 153 yards on 25 carries tonight. And that's a career for some guys. <laughs> well, more importantly, Coach, 8.18 to go now. Out of the eye formation, and Dwenger's taking as much time as they can, leading 21-14. Running play again. First down. There he goes again. Devin Tipman. Give him 17 more yards. They right. can't stop him right now. Yeah, I would I would bet a lot of money it's going to go to him once again here this next play. Yeah, he's like, oh, it's coming out of the ball game. I guess I lost that bet. Yeah, he he's, needs, uh, a break. <laughs> needs a break here, but he's been an absolute workhorse, like a Clydesdale out there, just tough to bring down. Big physical guy, runs exceptionally well for a big man as well. Uh, just really impressive young player. Under eight minutes to play now. Dwenger, 21, Carroll, 14. Balls at the Charger 48-yard line. Out of the I formation. On first down, fullback. Cron around the left end. Gets away from one man and drives to the 40-yard line. Now the flag comes in. It was, we had some extra cricketer activity down here about 30 yards away from the play. A couple of guys were, you know, the chili was running a little hot down here. And uh, the referee, like Barney Fife, wants to nip it in the butt. So he wants to be involved. I don't see anything that was too uh, out of the ordinary there. Well, when it's 30 yards away from the play, you know, and well, maybe he decided, oh, I should get into the yeah, action Yeah, maybe, maybe get in the action. I'm getting a little bored over here on the, as a side judge. I don't know. That didn't look too egregious to this, me. This may be one of those offsetting deals. Yeah. Well, that stops the clock with 7.36 to go. Dead ball, personal foul, Carroll. Wow. And that's it. Wow. Dead ball, personal foul. That's it. That's all there is. Well, what's the old adage, Jim? The guy that gets uh, the, the second guy the is the one that gets guy. caught. There they you go. They always get the second guy. Yep. They never get the first one. It's kind of like when I got into a fight with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coach, Coach Dynan's son there, Cade, uh, again, it's kind of back and forth. Both guys kind of tangled up there a little bit. and uh, Boy, kind of kind of a nitpicky call there in my opinion, but. Dad never believed me when I said he hit me first. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> well, this is going to put Dwenger in pretty good shape now. This will put the ball at the Carroll 25. That's the seventh penalty against the Chargers for 65 yards. And some of the officials here on the Carroll side who paid their way in didn't care for that call. <laughs> Yeah. First down for Dwenger at the Carroll 25. They lead 21-14. Seven and a half minutes to play. Dwenger keeps it on the ground. They may not throw the ball anymore tonight unless they get behind. Look at that pile of humanity. Rugby scrum. Get <laughs> physical point attack run game for the Dwenger Saints. Yeah, that, that last penalty, you know, again, of course I'm a football coach, so I don't have any uh, affinity for officials usually. <laughs> that seemed like a little ticky-tacky to that situation. This situation in the game, too. There's, there's nothing that was egregious there. I watched the two. Boy, it really set uh, set the table here for Dwenger, though. Yeah, and then they only assessed one penalty. Anyway, 
Crone carried the ball in that last play. Second down and five now for the Saints of the Carroll 20-yard line as they're uh, trying to march in here for perhaps a insurance touchdown. Up the middle. Look at that hole. Down to the goal line. They're going to mark him at the oh, one. Yeah, the great linebacker, Ellinger, in the backfield again at fullback. You know, he did carry it uh, a few times this game, and he carried it a few times more last game. You know, a guy that, uh, you know, Dwinger just has the ability, again, with a big physical offensive line, they keep rolling out these backs. You know, they'll throw out T.J. Tittman, and obviously uh, the younger Tittman, the sophomore, has been a workhorse all night. Then you, then you give the ball to fullback, a guy like Ellinger, who's a tough, tough guy as well and tough to bring down. So just a stable of backs here for the Saints. I formation, first and goal for the Saints at the one. Fullback. Off the it's really challenging. Even a great player like Ellinger there uh, missing the open field. 4.53 remaining. Two receivers on each side. They're in the red zone. And a play action fake. Volts pass to an open man at the 10. Nathan Hera dives forward to the 9. Maybe the 8. Good little second bootleg down. play there. We're making that an opportunity here on second short. Great first down call. Again, Getting flow one direction, bootleg in the opposite way, giving Gavin Vote an opportunity on the run to make that throw well executed. Second and two from the eight. Vote rolling, looking. Now in some trouble. Throw it away, Gavin. Oh, it's intercepted. No, if you're Carroll. Picked off. This could be a pick six. Rambling, bobbling, stumbling all the way down to the 40 yard line. And that could be good night, Norris, right there. Griffin Eifert as he had a night. He got the pick, and that may seal the deal. Just an outstanding play. And I'll even go further on that, Jimmy. I was watching the whole play, obviously working towards Cam Trouders there, the great receiver. What great one-on-one -on -one coverage there by Oberfeld again. Again, he's had a huge night defending Trouders. Had a tough task to defend him one-on-one -on -one so many times and did a great job there. That was a little out route there off the rollout that they're trying to isolate. Uh, Cam Childers and Oberfeld was just all over that route, forcing uh, Gavin Vogt to uh, to break containment there, break the structure of the play and try to make something happen. Again, forced him into a bad decision. So what a great play there by the Dwinger Saints in particular, oh, Oberfeld, just an outstanding job of one-on-one -on -one coverage. Dwinger declined a face mask penalty on Carroll. I assume that penalty flag was thrown before the interception. That's why it's being declined. I would assume. I would assume. That's we obviously they don't mic up the referees here, but if that was the case, that was uh, that was not a post possession foul. Thus, Dwinger declines the face mask penalty, and four turnovers now for Carroll. There's your story. There's your story, Coach. Yep. Well, Carroll's you know made some plays, had some good drives, and had some opportunities. And again, yeah, got hold on the football. They're going to be in the minus category again on turnovers for a second straight week, and look out. Say goodnight, Nick. Devin Tipman, give that man six points. Again, he's the type of guy, you know, when you get a defense reeling, you know, disappointment on the other side after the turnover. I tackle that. Here's Floyd throwing into the end zone. Oh, did he catch it? Did he catch it? No, incomplete. My goodness, Chowders almost Boy, came Cass, up with a spectacular Cass, catch in front of the Carroll band. Boy, that would, that would have been an unbelievable play, Jim. I tell you what, what a great athlete. Climbing the ladder there, timing the jump, go up on the high point. He's, a, he's an electric player. 40 seconds to go. It's fourth down at the Dwenger 22-yard line. Joe is earning his money trying to keep everything together as these people are trying to unplug their equipment and they're knocking our equipment around. On fourth and four, here's a swing pass to Saylor and he's going to be dropped behind the line of scrimmage. And so Dwinger will take over on downs, he'll take a knee and that will do it and everybody will get out to the parking lot and wait for the traffic to clear up. We've got a team meal at nine tomorrow. Think I'll make it? I don't know. Well, let's see. It's what, 9.30 now? You got... Yeah, you got 11 and a half 11 and hours. 11 half hours, yeah. I hope. I hope. So Dwinger will go to 5-0. and oh. Carroll will drop to 2-3. and three. Dwinger drive will begin at their own 25. The Saints line. will stay top ranked in 4A. But the, they were pushed tonight. Don't let that score fool you. It was 21-14, and Carroll had the ball at the 10 
with a chance to tie it. But Dwinger got a pick and turned it into points. And that was pretty much it. Here comes the victory formation. There's the snap. There's the knee. And we will play no more football tonight because nobody is in any hurry to do anything. Time to shake hands. Time to head to the bus. And a exciting atmosphere here tonight at the Gorsuch Athletic Complex. It's going to end up a disappointing loss on the home side. But, uh, again, don't let the score fool you as the final score is Dwenger 34, Carroll 14. Pat, that was, a, that was a very good football game we watched out here tonight. Yeah, again, like you said, I don't think the score was indicative of the competitiveness of the game. Um, you know, again, some, some mistakes by the Chargers and, and really bad areas of the field. Uh, what really, really were the story of the game, the turnover uh, in the first 